One of the most exciting things about mathematics is when it turns out to solve a problem that it wasn't even exactly trying to solve. Before the octave was split into 12 equal notes, some chords sounded a lot better than other chords. So the certain notes were favoured and other notes were considered to be a bit less important to the scale, so they thought, oh, well, we'll just leave those a bit sounding a bit awful because the most important ones sound fine. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, that's the F sharp, and that's the furthest away from the C. It's the most unrelated to the scale of C major. The F sharp, this interval, used to be called the diabolo in musica, the devil in music, because it's the most dissonant interval because the harmonics completely clash with each other. When you play a note on a string, the two ends of the string are fixed, and that makes a wave with fixed ends and a sine wave oscillating with those fixed ends. And so the harmonics of that note are all the other waves that also go through that point. So there's one that's this big, but then there's one that's half that size, and then there's one that's a third of that size, and then a quarter, and then a fifth. So that is called the harmonic series. So the first one, which is half the wavelength, is an octave above. And the next one is a third of the wavelength, which is a perfect fifth above that. So if you go up a fifth, you go from C to G, and then you go to D. In theory, you eventually come back to C. The funny thing is the mathematics of it doesn't quite work like that. In sound waves, it's not that the sound waves are split up into 12 lengths, it's that it needs to be split into 12 ratios, which means that you don't need to divide two by 12, but you have to take the 12th root of two. And that's a very difficult problem. And so it wasn't until mathematicians were able to take the 12th root of two that it was really possible to divide the octave into 12 equal intervals. Once all 12 were equally spaced, it became possible to write music in every single key. You can see that Bach was very excited by the possibility of writing in every key because he sat down and wrote a prelude and fugue in every key. And this had not been done before. And this is the 48 uh, preludes and fugues he wrote. My field of research is in higher dimensional category theory, which is a branch of what one might call very abstract mathematics that grew up in the 40s right here at the University of Chicago. It deals with structures in mathematics, and you can think of it as the mathematics of mathematics. I love the fact that a mathematical breakthrough enabled advances to occur in music as well and inspired Bach to write these amazing pieces, which are also some of my favorite pieces of music, completely aside from the fact that there's any connection to mathematics.